Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our integration series and we're going to be talking about trig substitutions. So specifically we're going to be going over the form a squared minus x squared. So let's go ahead and dive into it. When you see the form a squared minus x squared, we're going to go ahead and use the substitution x is equal to a, whatever that value is, times sine of theta. So why are we going to go ahead and use that trig identity? Let's go ahead and rewrite it so we can really see the opposite over hypotenuse. If I divide over that a, I get x divided by a is equal to sine of theta. So looking at my angle theta in this triangle right here, I know the opposite is going to be x and the hypotenuse is going to be a. So here we can go ahead and find this missing leg. Let's go ahead and call it z for now. So we know that x squared plus z squared is equal to a squared and I want to solve for z. So here I subtract off x squared, z squared is equal to a squared minus x squared. Notice now that we have that form and then I can go ahead and take the square root of both sides and I get the square root of a squared minus x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that in our triangle. And that's the reason that we use sine of theta. So here we're going to go ahead and solve some integrals that involve a squared minus x squared. So first we have dx divided by 16 minus x squared to the power of 3 halves. So let's go ahead and identify what we're working with here. We know that this is 4 squared minus x squared. So here I'm going to go ahead and use the form x equals 4 times sine of theta. And in order to set up my triangle, I want to go ahead and solve for opposite over hypotenuse. So right here is going to be my angle theta. So I got opposite hypotenuse. That means this remaining leg is going to be 16 4 squared minus x squared. Remember, we're doing substitution. So we are going to substitute this into our integral. So notice here that we already have x. We have that x is equal to 4 sine of theta. We also have a dx, which means we need to solve for a dx because I need to replace that. So let's go ahead and use the equation x is equal to 4 sine of theta. So what I can do is I can take the derivative of both sides in terms of x. So I get 1 is equal to 4 cosine of theta, but it's like we're using implicit differentiation. I have to multiply by the derivative of theta in terms of x. Now, if I multiply that dx over, I get dx is equal to 4 cosine theta d theta. And a lot of people, once they get comfortable with what they're doing, they skip from this step to this step. So here we have what our dx is equal to. Our dx is equal to 4 cosine d theta. So let's go ahead and plug all of this into our integral. So here we're going to have the integral of 1 over. So 16 minus our x squared. So that's quantity 4 sine of theta squared all of this to the power of 3 halves, and now we're going to multiply by our dx, which is equal to 4 cosine theta d theta. Okay, so first what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to square that 4 sine of theta. So we get 16 minus 16 sine squared of theta to the power of 3 halves d theta. Now notice I can pull out that 16, so let's go ahead and do that. By pulling out that 16, I get 16 to the power of 3 halves, because don't forget, it's all to the power of 3 halves, multiplied by 1 minus sine squared of theta to the power of 3 halves d theta. So 16 to the power of 3 halves, we're going to take the square root of 16, which equals 4, and then raise that to the power of 3. So 4 to the power of 3, that's 64. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that and replace it with a 64. And then notice here we have 4 divided by 64, which is equal to value of 16. So if you wanted, you could bring that out. We get 1 over 16, or you can leave that inside the interval. It doesn't really matter. So we have cosine of theta divided by, and notice here we have 1 minus sine squared of theta. Well, that's equal to cosine squared of theta. And remember, this is still to the power of 3 halves. So here that the half is going to cancel out with the power of 2. So we're left with this. We have cosine to the power of 3 theta on top. That's because this remaining power of 3 stayed there. And here we can cancel out one of those. So we get 1 over cosine squared theta, which we can go ahead and rewrite that. So that becomes secant to the power of 2 of theta. And we know what that is. When we take the antiderivative, we get tangent of theta plus some constant c. So remember, this is not our final solution. We actually have to use this triangle, which is why I drew it in order to replace back in what tangent of theta is equal to. So if we remember, tangent of theta is equal to um, TOA, opposite over adjacent. So let's go ahead and replace that in our integral. We have that 1 16 stays the same, and then we get that opposite leg divided by the adjacent leg, 16 minus x squared plus some constant c. 
And that right there is our final solution. So that's why I always draw out the triangle first because then I can go back and use it when we need to substitute things back in. If we start with a function of x, so an integral of x, we need to end with an integral of x. We cannot end in terms of theta. Number two, we have verify the area of a circle with radius a is pi times a squared. So first we want to find a function because we need to have something to integrate, right? So let's go ahead and use what the formula for a circle is. So we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to whatever the radius is squared. So in this case, the radius is a. So what I'm going to do is solve for y because that's going to be my function, right? So I subtract over x squared, y squared equals a squared minus x squared. Notice that we have that form now, so we know we're going to use a sine of theta. And then we have y is equal to the square root of a squared minus x squared. So let's go ahead and draw out our circle. Pretend that was, you know, a perfect circle. So I know that this extends all the way from 0 to the value a, right, because that represents the radius. So in order to find this area, I'm going to have to integrate our function. Our function is the square root of a squared minus x squared in terms of x, and we're going all the way from 0 to a. So that's going to be our bound, 0 to a. But notice this is only going to give me a fourth of the circle, and I want to get the entire circle. So I'm going to have to multiply this whole thing by 4. So now let's go ahead and talk about our substitution. So we have the form that we want. So we have x equals a sine of theta. Here, if I divide both sides by a, I get what sine is equal to, and I can, which helps me with the triangle, right? So here we have opposite over hypotenuse, which means the remaining leg is at a squared minus x squared, because this right here is theta. And now what we need to do is we need to find that dx, which means we're going to go ahead and use this. So remember, I take the derivative of both sides in terms of x, so I get 1 is equal to a, because that's just a scalar, it's just a constant, times cosine of theta. But remember, we have to multiply by the derivative of theta in terms of x, which means we can multiply that dx over. dx is equal to a cosine of theta d theta. So now what we have is we have what x is equal to, so we can plug it in there. We have what our dx is equal to, so we can plug it in here. But notice there is a third element this time, and it has to do with the bounds. We have a lower bound of 0, and we have an upper bound of a. So we actually need to replace that in our bounds, and we're going to have to use what theta is equal to. So we have x divided by a is equal to sine of theta. So to get theta all by itself, I take inverse sine of both sides. It's inverse sine of x divided by a equals theta. So now let's go ahead and make a little chart. I'll go ahead and do that over here. We have our x values. Our upper value is a. Our lower value is 0. And we want to go ahead and find what theta is equal to for our new integral in terms of theta. So here, I'm going to go ahead and take inverse sine, and I'm going to replace my x value. So that becomes a divided by a, which is inverse sine of 1. So at what angle is sine equal to 1? Sine starts at 0, and then it goes up to 1 at pi over 2. So that's going to be pi over 2, and that is our new upper bound. Now we're going to do the same thing with 0. We get 0 divided by a, which is 0. So when at what angle is sine 0? That's going to be at the very origin, which means theta is equal to 0, and that's our lower bound. So let's go ahead and set up this entire area. We're still multiplying it by 4, but now we have a lower bound of 0 and an upper bound of pi over 2. And here we have a squared minus quantity x squared. I'm just going to go ahead and square it right now. So a squared sine squared of theta. And now we need to multiply by dx, so that becomes a cosine of theta d theta. So now we have our new integral all in terms of theta. So let's go ahead and start simplifying. 0 to pi over 2. I'm going to factor out this a squared. The square root of a squared is just a. So now we're left with the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta times a cosine of theta d theta. And remember, 1 minus sine squared, that's just equal to cosine squared of theta, right? And what's the square root of cosine squared of theta? Well, the square root and the square just cancel each other out. And so this looks space weird, but you get the idea. So here, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my scalar multiples. I have a times a, so that's a squared. And remember, a is just a number. It represents the radius. And we get cosine squared of theta d theta. So we can't integrate cosine squared of theta straight through. What we need to use is one of the um, half angle, no, double angle identities. So instead of cosine squared of theta, what I'm going to do is replace that with its identity. So that's 1 plus cosine of 2 theta d theta. And if you wanted to, you could bring that 1 half to the outside. It multiplies by 4 to become a 2. And here, now we can go ahead and integrate this. So 2a squared. And here we get theta 
plus, and that becomes sine of 2 theta, divide by that scalar of 2, evaluated between 0 and pi over 2. So let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. So all of these terms actually go to 0, and we're just left with this pi over 2. So here we multiply that 2a squared times pi over 2. Well, that is equal to pi times a squared. And we did exactly what the question wanted. We proved that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. Alrighty, so we have one more here. We have the integral from 1 half to 1 of 1 minus x squared divided by x squared dx. So this has the form a squared minus x squared, and our a is going to be equal to 1, right? So here we're going to use the trig substitution 1 times sine of theta, or if you wanted, that's just sine of theta. So let's go ahead and set up our triangle. Notice with definite integrals in our previous problem, we didn't need to use anything to plug it back in because we changed our bounds. So in this case, if you didn't want to draw a triangle because we have a definite integral, you don't need to. I'm just going to, you know, for funsies. So we get x, 1 square root of 1 minus x squared, and let's go ahead and find our dx. So if I take the derivative of both sides, I get 1 is equal to cosine of theta times d theta dx, or you could just skip to this next step once you get comfortable with it, cosine of theta d theta. So remember, we found what x was equal to, x is equal to sine of theta. We found what dx was equal to, and remember our last step is to go ahead and replace these bounds. So we can go ahead and set up our table x, and we have theta, and theta is going to be equal to inverse sine of x, right? So here, let's go ahead and plug in our values. We have a lower bound of 1 half. So here we want to find inverse sine of 1 half. I can never remember, like I don't have these memorized. So I know sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which means this one has to be the square root of 3. And I always just remember the bigger angle goes across from the bigger side. So the smaller angle goes across from the smaller side like that. So this is going to be pi over 6. So we have a new lower bound of pi over 6. Now we have upper bound of 1, so inverse sine of 1. That occurs at pi over 2, right? At pi over 2, sine is equal to 1. So here we have our new bound, so let's go ahead and set up our integral. Okay, so we have the square root of 1 minus x squared. I'm just going to square it right now. That's just sine squared of theta divided by x squared. That is also sine squared of theta. And then we need to multiply by dx, which is cosine of theta d theta. So notice that 1 minus sine squared of theta, we know what that's equal to, and that is equal to cosine squared of theta. And when we take the square root of something squared, they just go ahead and cancel out. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. So we have a lower bound of pi over 6, an upper bound of pi over 2, and that is going to be cosine of theta multiplied by cosine of theta. So cosine squared of theta divided by sine squared of theta d theta. So here we know what cosine divided by sine is equal to. That is going to be cotangent, so cotangent squared of theta. But we don't know how to integrate that straight through, so I'm going to go ahead and use the trig identity where this is equal to cosecant squared of theta minus 1, right? That's from the Pythagorean identity. So here we know how to integrate that. So we get negative cotangent of theta minus theta evaluated between pi over 6 and pi over 2. So let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. So here we have cotangent of pi over 2. That's equal to cosine. That's 0. So that first term is going to go to 0. So we get negative pi over 2. Distribute that minus sign. That becomes plus root 3 plus pi over 6. So using a calculator, this is equal to about 0 0.68. And so that right there is our solution. So this is how we can use trig in order to solve integrals. We can use that trig substitution. So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.